Hey everybody, this is Mr. Mobbin coming at you once again, taking a look at AP US History, topic 4.6, looking at effects of the market revolution. This is our third video in this topic, and uh, this should be a relatively short one. We're going to be taking a look at the effects of the market revolution on organized labor. Now, as we've said before, uh, you know, this is a major time of transition economically for the nation. Uh, we are seeing more and more people uh, giving up on farming and now moving to the factories. But understand what that means. When you were a farmer, there was a lot of ownership to some degree over your own success and your economic livelihood. You decided when you worked. You decided you know, what you would harvest. You decided what you would sell your crops for. You decided your work schedule. That, you had a lot of empowerment over what you did. Now, granted, you know, farming was becoming more difficult because of uh, lowering of prices and stuff like that nationally, but there's still a lot of ownership over what you did for a living. However, when you go to the factories, you work in the big cities, yes, it's much more stable work and you're, and you're getting paid more, uh, but a lot of the ownership of what you do has now been taken away from you. You don't decide when you work. Your work schedule is dictated to you. Uh, you don't decide which job you're going to have in the factory. That is dictated to you. Uh, you know, you don't decide, you know, what your wages will be. That will be dictated to you. I mean, even the simple matter of when you ate and when you used the restroom were now dictated to you on a, on a daily work schedule. So this is a very, very different kind of thing. So you've now got more and more, you know, laborers that are now dependent on business owners and that is a that's a different dichotomy than than what we had seen before uh now as we've seen you know as we mentioned previously these workplace conditions in these factories were were not all that great uh you know work was hard pay was low hours were long conditions weren't very safe uh you know if you take a look at this uh this example here uh, talking about you know the uh, the experiences of a factory girl, and remember we said that you know in these textile mills like at Lowell, Massachusetts, a lot of the employees there were young teenage uh, women that were working there, and you know this if you just read this through here, you can kind of get a sense of of the toil that these young ladies are going to be facing. You know, uh, you know, you know, working 13 hours in a day, you never seem to have time for yourself. You are working in an area that is stuffy. You are working in crowded conditions. You never seem to have a life of your own. Uh, and it just seems like a very, very, you know, cold, heartless existence, which is different than farming. I mean, you know, when you were farming, yes, the work is hard and the hours are long, true, but you're on your land. You are with your family. Uh, now you are in this dark area that you are thrown into with strangers, with loud machines, very little sunlight. Uh, it, it, it is kind of a depressing existence. And, you know, as more and more people are exposed to these workplace conditions, there's going to be calls for trying to improve these conditions. And this, of course, leads to the early unions in American history. Uh, unfortunately, though, these early unions are not going to be very powerful. Uh, still, though, I mean, it, and, and reason being is that uh, we still have most Americans not in factory jobs yet. We still see the government really trying to have very little to no impact on how workplaces are to be uh, operated, or, or you know, the idea of government regulation of industries was pretty much unheard of at this time period. Uh, and even though, yes, following the case Commonwealth versus Hunt, that you know it was legal to form unions uh, and, and negotiate contracts, still though, this, this is going to be a very, very difficult time for the early union movements. Uh, obviously, employers were not keen on unions. Unions, of course, could theoretically take away the total omnipotency of or omnipotence of business owners. 
Uh, courts, for the most part, didn't seem to be on, be on your side. And if you are forming a union, you are still in, you know, in co a competition with non-union labor, which is seemingly growing day by day. Uh, and even though, yes, some states in the North are starting to create 10-hour workday laws, this is still very early on in the process of organized labor to really try to have an impact. Uh, it's very slow going in its infancy before the Civil War. It's not going to be until after the Civil War that you start to see organized labor really starting to have some teeth, really starting to get robust membership numbers, being able to have a real impact on not only uh, workplace conditions, but on government itself, you know, having political aspirations in terms of not just reforming the workplace, but actually maybe perhaps changing the system, so to speak. Uh, but we'll get to that, of course, at a later time. So just keep in mind, organized labor is starting to sprout up, but it's in its infancy. It's minimal. It's weak. Uh, it, it's, it's a small part of the greater market revolution. Okay, so we will leave it there for now, and we will see you next time.